Hey YouTube, it's the Test Lead, and today's video is an introduction to SQL and Relational Database Management Systems. If you're new to my channel, please feel free to subscribe. I make content to help you on your QA and automation journey. Now back to the video. Every company in the world has data of some sort. This could be product information, customer information, or just simply logs. So how can a company safely store access and modify this data. That's where SQL and relational databases come in. This video will cover what is a table, what is a relational database, and what is SQL. First off, what is a table? We are starting with the most basic unit first. And then we're gonna build on from there. Think of a table as a container and you store a bunch of later information there in a specific format. So for example, let's say at home in your drawer, you may have a, a sock drawer. So in that drawer or that container, you have a bunch of socks. And you're gonna store it in that drawer. Think of a table the same way. And as I said, it has a specific format. So the format is each table has vertical columns and horizontal rows. Each row of data is a unique record. Each column represents a field that should exist for that record. And each table has a unique name so that we can find it in a database. And the name of that table should somehow describe the information that's stored in the table. Look at this example here. The table name is students and that will describe the information that is inside the table. From there we have our header for each column which states the information located in the column. We have STDID which is a student ID name and city. Then we have three rows of information. Student ID 201, name of Bob, and city of Hyderabad are all part of one record or row. Next up, primary keys. As I stated previously, each record in a table should have a unique value. To ensure this, we have a primary key on at least one field in the table. No two rows can have the same exact primary key value. This is how we ensure the uniqueness. And the next part tables will cover is data types. Next, you might be thinking about what type of data types can each field have in our table. Some examples of values include numbers, text, booleans, and timestamps. Now that you have a better understanding of what tables are, you may be thinking, well, where are these tables stored? As I mentioned previously, databases. And more specifically, relational databases. So next, what is a relational database? Relational database management systems are one of the most popular database management systems out there. That's because they manage relational databases, which are the most popular type of databases. So you see how they work together? So first we had our containers where we store information called tables, and now we're gonna store one or more tables in a central location called the database. A relational database management system so it has an interface or middle person between an end user and a database. An end user is you, me, or anybody trying to access a database. In a database management system, you can create, store, retrieve, and run queries on a database and information in it. These are some of the most popular relational database management systems. And now you may be thinking, why do I need to save in a fancy database as I mentioned previously versus a simple Excel file. Let's get more detailed about that. Using a relational database management system not only gives you a way to interact with the information, but also helps to provide data security, integrity, and uniform procedures. Other benefits over Excel files or flat files include concurrency. In file systems, there's no control over multiple users accessing the same data at the same time. Multiple people updating the same data at the same time can lead to corrupt data. Relational database management systems allow users to work concurrently to access the data without problems. Another benefit, you can use SQL, which we'll get to next, to interact with databases and tables. And you'll see this is a very good positive. Database backups and replication is an easy process. And last but not least, privileges. Different users can have different privileges or permissions for what they're allowed to do and not do in your database or table. So let's recap. 
we have our tables, which are containers, we have our databases, which store these containers, and now let's try to figure out how we'll interact with these databases via our relation database management system. Because we can't just have a system and then not have a way to interact with it. So now here comes SQL. SQL or structured query language is a language used in programming to manage data held in a relational database management system. To query data is to request data from a table or a combination of tables in a database. SQL has a lot of capabilities as you can see on the screen. There are many different versions of the SQL language, but each version must support these major commands. Insert, select, update, delete, and where. So in short, SQL is very powerful and you'll use it to access your data, update your data, insert your data, and analyze your data to its full extent. I'll make future videos about how to actually use SQL for this. But if you found this video helpful at all, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos, please leave them below. If you need help on your QA journey, check out my book, QA Must Know Vocabulary, available on Amazon. And most importantly, don't forget to learn something new today.